Hello, it's Bruce Williams again, and I thought today I would review a surgical pathology case that recently crossed my desk. I've had a number of requests from those of you who don't do a lot of necropsies to review some interesting surgical pathology cases. And this is a particular entity that if you've never seen it can be very confusing, and we don't see it all that often. I may see three or four of them within a year, but it's very characteristic. It's an interesting lesion that's well document, in, documented in the dog. We're looking at a section of the uterus of a dog, and I'm going to concentrate on this area. The lesion is diffuse in the section, but this particular area is the best preserved. And this is the, the thick, smooth muscle of the uterine wall. There are a couple little areas of inflammatory cells around vessels, which we're going to ignore. This particular lesion is called pseudoplacentational endometrial hyperplasia, a variant of endometrial hyperplasia seen in the uterus of dogs in pseudopregnancy or pseudosiesis. And it's named pseudoplacentational because although this animal is not pregnant, the endometrium forms three very characteristic layers which are seen in placentational sites and the gross lesion actually is very zonary. There will be multiple ones along the urine horn as if the animal was pregnant. At slightly higher magnification, we can see the three zones that are present within this particular lesion and very characteristic. We have the deep glandular zone. We have an intermediate band of fibrous connective tissue. And then we have what is known as the luminal epithelial zone, which is also sort of glandular, but the columnar epithelium is thrown into these crazy sort of papillary patterns and interconnected glands, and the whole thing becomes a solid layer of epithelial tissue at the lumen. Let's look at this at just a slightly higher level, and you can see we'll start in the deep glandular zone, and you can see that these are very large glands like you might see with other forms of, uh, of endometrial hyperplasia, and they're lined by a low cuboidal non-vacuolated epithelium. The next layer is this loosely arranged fibrous connective tissue right here, which runs along the top of the deep glandular zone. And then we started to get into the luminal epithelial zone. As it interfaces with that connective tissue, it forms very nice glands. And these glands are lined by stratified columnar epithelium, which appear to be under the effect of the progesterone released by the corpora lutea that you will always see in concert with these if you receive the ovaries as well. And we know it's under the effect of progesterone because of the vacuolation of these particular cells. We don't see them in the deep glandular zone, but you do see this in the epithelial junctional zone. And if you don't remember the name of the different zones, don't worry about it. As long as you can identify these three zones and get the lesion, that's important. I've had these uh, submitted to me as uterine carcinomas. They're certainly not in the aplastic. But let's, let's go on up into this luminal epithelial zone. The deepest parts are these sort of bizarre uh, adjacent glands with a fibrous core, and they often contain a fair amount of secretory material. And you can see these pseudostratified epithelial cells. Um, they are secreting something as well as forming micropapillary projections because that's what epithelium does when it has a lot of room to grow outwards. At the top of this zone, there's actually a very characteristic finding as these glands start to dissipate and it becomes very papillary. The nuclei start to get very large and pleomorphic and you will see a number of multinucleated cells which are very reminiscent of syncytiotrophoblasts. These are not syncytiotrophoblasts, but they are very characteristic of this particular lesion. We know they're not syncytiotrophoblasts because they're only present in this particular zone. They do not infiltrate the rest of the endometrium like we would see in an animal that was actually pregnant. There's also no fetal or fetal tissue 
within these sections, and obviously the practitioners will note that the animal was not pregnant. So this is pseudoplacentational endometrial hyperplasia. It is an uncommon variant of the much more common cystic endometrial hyperplasia. Cystic endometrial hyperplasia will have marked uh, numbers of, of large or variably sized cysts within the, uh, within the endometrium. It will not have this characteristic uh, trilaminar appearance. It is a diffuse change, whereas pseudoplacentational endometrial hyperplasia is a very segmental change within the uterus. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this quick presentation, and I hope that you might have learned something about pseudoplacentational endometrial hyperplasia. So the first couple of times it crosses your desk, like it crossed mine, you don't get confused and, and misdiagnose it. Hey, y'all have a great day now.